have the mic on. <laughs> Three years ago, I was playing a card game with my family, one that has been my family for at least six generations. As I was watching the cards, I wonder if there was an app for this game. So I looked online, saw there wasn't one, and decided to make one. Two weeks into development, I found a Microsoft app offering $100 to anyone who would publish an app by the end of June, which is only a few weeks away. So I quickly got on my computer, started programming, and finished my app the day before the deadline. Then I found out I needed a copyright, which would take two weeks. So I filed for a copyright through the United States Copyright Office, started my own company through the Arizona Corporations Commission, and was ready to go. I published my app, made a small profit, and found a lot of entrepreneurship. Startups are difficult and risky. Forbes says 9 out of 10 startups ultimately fail. There's significant risk to this, losing valuable time and money, not returning investments to those who have funded your project. However, a teenager might not have many of these risks at hand. If you were to start a company in order to fail, you could continue with high school, go to college, and live life as any other child. If you were to succeed, however, you could continue with high school, go to college, and leave with no debt and no need to hold the side job. Now, this poses a new question. Can a minor even own a, start, own a company? The answer is yes for limited liability companies. Currently, most states, including Arizona, allow for minors to own a limited liability company by outlaw incorporating in contracts. Legally, many times minors cannot sign a contract, which in most cases can be solved with a parent signature. Minors are also allowed to have patents, copyrights, and in some states, get a trademark. Patents, trademarks, and copyrights are just ways of giving someone or something exclusive access, preventing others from stealing someone's idea. The next problem is funding. Who would want to fund a project being started by a kid? There are mainly two options for the typical minor, loans from friends and family members, and crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is the funding of a project by many people, mostly on the internet, for a project they're interested in. In return, they can get everything from pre-orders, to shares in the company, to recognition. Crowdfunding has helped start the Oculus Rift, which creates a 3D virtual reality for a person so they can submerge themselves within a video or game. It has also helped start the Form 1 3D printer, which is an affordable 3D printer for households. Prison Architect and Elite Dangerous are two examples of video games that have been started by crowdfunding. Elite Dangerous acquired over a million dollars in funding through crowdfunding and the Pebble smartwatch, which is like the Apple Watch, but instead of costing $750, it's less than $100. Loans from friends and family members are most commonly the first form of payment for a startup, as loans from banks are too risky, and people in crowdfunding often not want to fund a project that has not even been started yet. Many kids in the last decade have started companies, and even young children, Leona Archer, at the age of nine, according to Business News Daily, started her own company for making hair wax. Now at 17, she has appeared in magazines such as Success and Forbes. Robert Ney, at 14, created an app called Bubble Ball, which within its first two weeks on the Apple App Store, received over a million downloads. CNN says he learned all he needed to from the public library, wrote 4,000 lines of code in just under a month. Robert Ney is a great example of how many kids start their own company creating something new or different, innovation. Mozilla Bridges was shopping for bow ties and disproved of what he saw on the market and believed he could make it better. He's now made over $30,000 and CNN says he plans on making his own clothing store later in life. I myself have started two companies. My first is DMAC LLC, which specializes in software development and has created 10 pennies, the game I mentioned earlier, and is currently in development of another game a shooter game that is a key component that will be revolutionary. My second company is Singular Software Solutions, which also specializes in software development and is currently combining programs of many companies in a certain field into one piece of software that is intuitively used, minimizes complications between talking with different pieces of software. In other words, we're making programs easier to use. Since I specialize in programming, my cost mainly involves labor and advertising. For labor, I'll offer a portion of the profits to those willing to work for me, or I'll outsource. Outsourcing is the funding of a third party for a service, commonly foreign. 
by outsourcing for just five dollars like an acquired quality 3D model or design for a web page. Outsourcing can be done on a website such as freelancer.com. Usually I'm someone involved in production. I'll direct people, give them tasks, and even do some of the programming. I believe it is important to oversee what is happening, make sure you want to get done, actually get stuck. Also, I recommend checking out some books or articles online to get started. One great website is the SBA.gov. SBA is standing for the Small Business Association. It will teach you how to start your own business, explaining everything from how and why to create a business model to paying taxes. Once the business is started and the wheels on the business start turning, it is time to determine who will work with you. What I've found is adults are typically reluctant to work without a guaranteed paycheck. Surprising, I know. <laughs> what I mean by this is if you offer an adult a few grand for a piece of software, you'd be much more likely to accept the offer than if you were to give a significant cut of the profits. There's a concept in the business world called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is what is given up to pursue another project or interest. For an hourly wage worker, the opportunity cost of working on software for a startup is his hourly wage. Meaning that if someone makes $30 an hour, every hour he works on a risky project is up $30. This means that 100 hours would give up $3,000. No insignificant amount. However, let's say a 15 year old can make $3 an hour for mowing lawns. Assuming he doesn't run out of lawns to mow, 100 hours would give up $300 which is relatively small compared to the adults, 3,000. I find it is usually easier to work with teenagers due to this lower opportunity cost. Now, this may be due partly to my age as I want to work for a 17-year-old, but my statement still stands. I know many kids who have the knowledge to create great new products, everything from new ways of streaming videos to customized operating systems, like a better Windows 10. But every time I ask whether or not to pursue it now, I get the same answer, and just do it when I'm older. The problem with this is there are times that are best for producing a certain good or service. For example, Kevin Ashley has made over $100,000 off a card game called Card Game Chess on the Windows 8 store. He heard that the consumer preview, the test version of Windows 8 was coming out, ran it, started developing his app and published it before the real version came out. Then, when everyone downloaded Windows 8 and went on the store, decided his app and he has made thousands off of his game. Now, I'm not saying you should stop the creation of new operating systems and stores. But what I am saying is you should take advantage of opportunities presented before it is too late. If Kevin Ashley had waited until the real version of Windows 8 came out, he would not have been as successful. If Robert Ney had waited four years later until he was an adult to publish his app uh, Bubble Ball on the Apple App Store, he would have missed his prime opportunity to publish an app. If Nick Deloisio had waited several years after he was 17 to create an app called uh, Sumly, which summarizes news articles for the iPhone, yet who may not have paid him $30 million for his game. If you have an idea for something amazing and innovative, and you wait longer or until you're an adult, you may lose your opportunity. Either someone may take your idea, or your window of opportunity may fade. So when a teenager says, I have a great idea, if I can just do it when I'm older, say, why not now? Too little time? too much going on, I'm not saying starting a company is easy, in no way is it simple. But sometimes the work pays off more than expected. Many kids are well on track for college, even if what they pursue turns into a bust, they'll gain much experience and use very little contrary to the person who would lose credibility among investors and a significant amount of money. Now I recognize many kids are involved in sports, clubs, and other activities, and they find it difficult to find the time. What I've found is, as long as you spend just eight to 10 hours on a risky project, it can allow you to balance your other activities while finish your project. The experience can help immensely in the future too. This applies to adults too. If you have an idea, pursue it. Check out some books or articles online and begin to form a plan for providing your good or service. If you've had an idea for a while, but not sure if it's still applicable, do some research and see if there's still demand for your product, although a VHS repair shop may not be the most profitable decision. I believe people, especially teenagers, who have an amazing idea for something creative and innovative, but have not made it or produced it yet, should expand their horizons and aspire to accomplish something great. Thank you.